Happy Hanukkah, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and tonight we are going to dye a semi-solid, sort of maybe a pastel or medium saturated tone onto some gloss fingering weight yarn, which is 70% merino, 30% silk. And then we are going to speckle this with Kool-Aid. I have not tried speckling onto a silk blend yarn before. In general, I have found that uh, colors tend to need a little more acid and heat to bind. So I'm not sure if we'll see something as sharp as we would on Superwash, but I am really excited to give this a go. Today's whole project is a little reminiscent of Dye Pot Weekly number one except with a different yarn base and the fact that we will be starting with acid dyes instead of um, some Kool-Aid squeeze bottles. The black cherry contains citric acid, red number 40, and blue number one. I am going to pre-soak the yarn in plain tap water for at least an hour. In this pot of water, I have 16 cups of water, and now I am going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar. One, two, three. In this cup, I have one cup of water. And we're gonna use some of my old stock solutions of Jacquard Sky Blue and Sun Yellow that started off as 1% stock solutions. I can't tell you exactly what they are now, but that's at least where we started. I do want a paler color, so let's see how much of this we've got. All right, this is a third of a cup of the sky blue. And now I want to add just a little bit, and we'll see how well I can measure out just a little bit. The sun yellow is not completely dissolved. I found that it was sort of problematic. This is a half teaspoon. Oops, and a couple drops went in as well. Um, I might decide to add a tiny bit more, but I want to see how much that tiny amount, sh amount shifted it. Oh, that's actually nice like a less bright blue. I wouldn't mind if we started getting something a little bit teal. So let's go ahead and add a little more yellow. Oh. All right, so this is a little over one teaspoon of the yellow. That's sort of what I wanted. So that was enough to shift it from sort of a bl blue to more of a green. Now I think if I was going to do this on one skein of yarn, that could be a fair amount of color. But since there's 300 grams of yarn that we're going to be dyeing, I'm hoping that this is going to give us a medium to a um, medium to low saturation. We'll find out. <laughs> We are still heating up, but I am going to go ahead and add our color. Ooh, look at that beautiful shade. That is gorgeous. And yeah, it actually is still fairly blue, but hopefully this will give some of those yellows some heat and time to dissolve. I'm not sure if the acid shifted it or what, but even if it ends up reading more blue, I think I'm still gonna be a huge fan of this color but into the acid it is reading much more of a blue again but I'm okay with that also so I liked the way it went at first so we shall see I think the reason why we are looking so much more blue now is that there are some dye particles in here that were not dissolved um, and so when I added it to the hot water those dissolved and this is actually looking starting to look pretty dark um, <laughs> I, oh, I guess it's not horrible. Um, but the nice thing is that we don't have to leave the yarn in too long. We can put the yarn in fast, remove it, and you know, 
there's there's things that we can do. So I'm gonna let this finish heating up and then we will start dyeing the first step of dyeing our yarn. Alrighty. The yarn had been pre-soaking about uh, an hour and a half or so. And now I've got my three skeins of gloss fingering weight yarn. Um, it I gently squeezed out, but it's still fairly saturated and possibly dripping. And I'm now going to place this into the pot. But we're going to go in fast, and then I am going to do a quick swish, swish, and then remove it. Because, yeah, this color is a bit more saturated than I wanted. Is that some... That is some dye there. And that's the thing. You can dip in, and I can decide to go back in if I want. But never be afraid to pull your yarn out of the pot. Especially since we are going to be spending some more time to heat set this later on. Um, I'm letting this drip out. I'm going to set it aside and see if I can see a little bit more about what's going on. The color struck to the yarn extremely, extremely quickly. Um, but we've got these beautiful tonal yarns, and I mean, there might be a hint of white left on one, but um, I think when they cool, I'll check the sort of color penetration overall to make sure it's not totally unbalanced. But I think we've got some great tonal yarns, and this is a really nice backdrop for some speckling. There's still a lot of dye in the pot, and I did worry that if I had left this yarn in the pot too long, we could have had something where the speckles that I was using wouldn't show up. And we'll see how well or not they do. Oh. But there is still some color in here, and so let's try to use it up. But before I do, I'm going to add... A little splash of yellow. An unmeasured splash of yellow. Um, and then to this, I am going to just plop in dry 100 grams of stroll fingering weight yarn and sort of plop it in. And so we actually have a nice green now. I wasn't sure how tealish or what it would feel. But actually look, there's like pale and dark packages. There's still there's still a lot of color in here. Um, but I think that um, did I see oh yeah we did get there was some something blue in there so we got some oh wow do you see those clumps? See those clumps of blue in the in the pot? Whoa, that is interesting, and huh, maybe an artifact of the old dye stock. I've seen something like that before, but given that I've got some blue sort of patches on here already, um, I want to absorb the color, and I am just therefore sort of trying to capture some of that, if that makes any sense. There we go. You gonna give me some like blue specks? Oh, not really. Maybe it's just in that one spot. Wonder what that is. Ah. Oh well. <laughs> it really does seem like those blue specks are like paper or something. But it definitely did get some specks of blue on my yarn. So I'm curious about how evenly distributed those will be. I'm going to turn off this heat. Most of the color has absorbed, save some of that blue business, and I'll take it out in a moment. I'm going to remove our pretty green yarn with the mystery globbies out. I'm going to set this yarn aside. I just took one of the globbies out and sort of pulled it with my hand, and I 100% think that it's some paper towel or other type of paper that got stuck in the pot at some point. I've been wondering how balanced this yarn is or not balanced, and ultimately, I realized a lot of this is going into mini skeins for the Hanukkah samplers. So I will be able to see just how balanced it is. 
All right, I'm laying out these three skeins of yarn. I just opened two packets of Kool-Aid and emptied them into a dry cup. And now there's a little bit of stuff left in here, so I'm just sort of tapping that on to see what there is to see. All right, now I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but that definitely is some color that is going on the yarn. But let's just start sort of going for it. I decided I wanted to be a little heavy-handed um, versus like the more micro speckles. I'm not sure if being a little heavy-handed will mean that more of it could be seen. Um, and by seen, the meaning that like more of it will go through the skein or if it's really going to only penetrate through one layer. But either way, I'm sort of going for it and whatever it is I'm doing is certainly visible. <laughs> um, but it's also going to mean that these are not all like if you were going to use two of these skeins in a project, it's definitely not going to be identical. I mean, it wouldn't be anyway, but if you're doing this sort of in this random fashion that I am, then you would probably want to make sure that you um, alternate skeins. Um, I'm having fun. And I like, I'm going to add some of the like finer sp speckles to this other one because I like that little bit of dusting that is going on as well. Um, some people might not like the spread, but I think that's part of the fun of the, of the food coloring. I mean, to some people this might not feel, I think, I, 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 I'm kind of digging this. I know that it might look a little wild. I think knit up, it could be really cool. Or as I like move the yarn around a bit. Um, But part of the reason for some of the angling is to make it a little less, um, a little less repeating. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We've got this big V. <laughs> oh, let's go down this way. Like, complete this zag. At least then we'll have like this N. Kind of doing some random bits as well. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I did these lines, but I feel like you could do a lot more random and do some like polka dots. I'm like, that's why I'm not getting this on the floor. Um, I like that this color is showing up all throughout. Yeah, I think that some of the yarns that you see that are definitely are not re-skeined, you would see it like almost looking like these little polka dots through it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I personally, I like speckling with sprinkles. I like being less heavy handed with this. I'm just curious what this is going to feel like when I flip the yarn over. I still have plenty, plenty of powder in my cup. I do want to give this, oh goodness, I want to give this like a, a good minute or two before I flip it. If I zoom in, you can see some of these smaller specks. And unlike superwash wool, these are absolutely spreading out more. Um, they are still discrete mini speckles, but uh, they are not as tiny and I'm not sure if they're going to stop. Um, I am curious oh, where, okay, we're about here. I am curious if I lift this up. Okay, this is good. This is penetrating through more than one layer, which is nice. And of course, I am now turning orange. Um, because when I do this with the very light hand for these like really small specks, um, those usually, yeah, those will usually stay just on the one layer of yarn, so therefore it's harder to get it through like multiple layers and you have to do a lot of moving around. I'm both really glad and really sad I decided to be a little heavy handed with this. Um, I don't mind if we get 
some more on there. I mean, I'm glad that we can see something throughout. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like the smaller, like this path right here in particular feels fairly wide. But again, you can see we're doing this like on the counter versus doing low immersion. So things haven't struck yet. Things are gonna spread and move and everything good like that. So um, let's at least try to dry my hands on a paper towel before going through with more speckling. On camera, the contrast feels really high. Um, it feels a little more subtle um, over here, um, at least in some areas. Like on, he on here, it's feeling um, a bit more subtle. I am curious, like if I open this up more, what things like are gonna look like towards the interior. And I do see, I mean, oh crap, my hand is definitely wet with specs if we're gonna have things all the way through and I think I think so um, I think can I speckle with like my pinky because I'm now like wet over here but I think um, I think we're pretty good um, but this is why I'm wearing gloves all right so the next stage is to steam all of this awesome color I do not use plastic wrap on my work surface. I used a shower curtain. And I am literally going to pick this up and plop it inside a steamer basket. The one thing I'm trying not to do is I'm trying not to rub it on the surface. I love a good dry rub, but that is not the look we are going for today. So go place this in the steamer basket and see what we end up with. This is technically a pasta insert versus a steam basket, but with a low level of water, it can function as a steam basket. Um, but we'll see if like part of the bottom gets soaked and that does something to the color. Either way, I am gonna go ahead and let this steam for 30 minutes. The 30, whoop, 30 minutes are up. And let's remove the yarn. Did I get it all? Okay, I got it all into this, this metal pan. And I'm gonna set this aside so it can cool. I don't see any color on the underside of this pan, although it does smell very cool ADE. -E. And if we look at the water beneath, that is also very clear. So the color that we had stayed within our yarn. Let's wash our yarn. Pop it in. Um, I broke one of my golden rules in that I no longer have a good hand on where the hanks are, but that is clear. All of this color is in our yarn. I'm gonna add a little bit of this is some Dawn dish soap. Just a tiny little squirt into the pan. Let's see. Oh, oh goodness. Might have some entangling to do after. Um, but the good thing is that, again, I'm going to be using the mini skins. So let's see if it's still wash. All right, we're seeing a little bit of bleeding. Um, there is some blue coming out. Now, some people might say, oh, you know, you didn't properly set the blue. But don't forget. The yarn went in the pot with the blue for a short period of time, but then I steamed it for a while. So, it should be pretty good. But, all things considered, with all of this color, oh yeah, we're done bleeding. Sometimes soap causes a little to come out, but, oh, and there might have been some of that paper on there as well. So, yeah, I think, I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna rinse out the rest of the soap and then hang this up to dry. Here is our bonus green yarn. One of the things we wanna make sure we rinse out here is some of that, I think there might be some of that blue paper stuck on. Um, yeah, you can see some of that, but 
Anyway, I'm going to add a little bit of the Dawn dish salt and see if there's any bleeding. This green is a really, really pretty green. Um, it's not quite a teal and it's a little saturated to be sea foam. Um, but I love it. But it's definitely not like an emerald shamrock kind of green. Um, I could use a box of crayons to swatch my colors again. That would be handy. But anyway, I'm gonna want rinse this. The water's already clear, so now I'm mostly rinsing out the soap and any more of those little blue pieces of paper that I attempted to capture with this bonus yarn. But I will be back once all of the yarn is dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. I think in some places the speckling worked a bit better than others. I started going with a heavier application of the Black Cherry Kool-Aid powder because I was unsure how much the itty bitty specks would show up and I was also hoping to get some pen color penetration through multiple layers of the yarn versus something that was just shallow on top of one piece of yarn. In addition to these red splotches, there are some small speckles, and I'm going to take you in for a close-up. Here we go. In some of these areas, and even on some of the darker sections, you can see the little itty-bitty speckles, um, but they are a bit more spread out than if I had been doing this on a superwash yarn. I think the combination of non-superwash and then the silk made these little specks spread out and then we lose some of the color intensity. One of the reasons why I was so excited to try this is that I absolutely love speckling with Kool-Aid, but really I knew that from, you know, 100% non-superwash wool, it spread out a bit more and gave us really sharp, discreet little speckles on our superwash merinos. And I wanted to see about getting some kind of speckly type yarn with this silk base because I don't think that's something that you see quite as often. I'm going to do a final summary of the entire Hanukkah series. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more and see the mini skeins, wait until the end of Hanukkah, the day, or I guess the night after Hanukkah is over. I should have the recap coming up where you can see all eight nights and all of the different creations. Initially, when we were dyeing our yarns today, I sort of wanted to get a blue-green base. I was kind of going for a teal. And mostly blue, but with like a little hint of yellow in it. And that's what we mixed. However, when I added it into the pot, it ended up becoming a lot more blue, I think because my stock solution wasn't well mixed. Therefore, we went and we did a bonus yarn and got this beautiful green. This very much is more of a green than a teal, but it's almost leading into a teal. And I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, I certainly wouldn't have wanted this base to be that green, but it was nice to, with some of the leftover dye, go and get that green feel. Um, there were some spots where it almost seemed like from some of those flecks that we would get some blue speckles and there might be a tiny hint in some areas of those blue speckles, but overall it's not feeling like a speckled yarn at all. Um, it feels very much like a tonal yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for joining me for another night of Hanukkah. I am having a blast filming these episodes and dyeing this yarn so that way we can all celebrate the holiday season together. If you want to stay more, stay tuned for tomorrow night because another video is going to come out after sunset eastern time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. In addition to fun events like this, I always post at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week and I love to experiment with different techniques, different types of dye, different yarn bases, and you really don't want to miss a thing. 
Thank you so much for watching.